Would you like to know how to not play scams? Check it out in this episode of How Not to Highline. Hi, I'm Ryan Jinks and welcome to A Crack. Go to hownottohighline.com if you want to learn highlining, bolts, and find Slackline friends. Basically, we're going to show you today how not to use cams. Now, if you already know how to install cams, make sure you watch till the end of this video because we're going to do a surprise. Now, I know you can skip to the end, but that would be cheating. If you are going to be that kind of person, make sure you click like and subscribe if you're going to skip past all this funny stuff that I'm about to do. Now, let's get started on how not to place cams. Now, instead of picking a beautiful parallel crack to show you a demonstration in, we actually picked a pretty bad one. So we can give you a real life scenario. Uh, step number one is make sure you put uh, three times or four times more cams on your harness than physically as possible to fit in the crack. That way you look rich and you look like you know what you're doing. And make sure the pieces you're gonna use the most, if you're right-handed, go on the left side in the very back. And that way you can't get to them when you need them the most, making your pump hand stronger than it would be than if they were accessible. Now, of course, when you place cams, you only put them in when you're afraid and not plan ahead where you're gonna put them. And so because you're afraid, you're gonna make sure you squeeze as hard as you can and place them in and push them back. That way you can't get them out later. Now cams, if they move up and down, up and down, they walk or go deeper in the crack. So make sure on your first piece, especially if it's only six feet up, you use a, uh, an extended sling ideally a 240 centimeter triple length sling and clip your rope to that. So that way there's no movement, even if it is touching the ground and doing you no good. And of course, when you're about to head way off to the side, you wanna make sure that you clip in as close as possible. So you wanna clip directly into the loop, put your rope in there with the gate facing the direction you're gonna go. That way you have the most drag you can possibly get. And of course you wanna place all your cams above your head where you ideally would wanna put your hand. And when you do put it in there, you wanna make sure you push it back at least until the trigger is behind the crack. That way your partner can't get them out and they have to buy you a new cam then. Obviously it's the opposite of everything I just said, but I wanna go over how to use cams because I believe you can rig safely, uh, high lines especially, if you know how to place cams. And obviously this is great for climbing as well. We're gonna go over Highline anchors specifically with cams in a separate episode because there are things you need to know besides placing a lot of them and equalization. Um, but we're just gonna focus on basic cam placements right now. So you don't wanna squeeze these all the way because they actually do um, get stuck. So anywhere between 50% and 90%, as soon as these lobes right here cross over each other, you're getting into dangerous territory. So uh, about like that right there seems to be good. And you want it to be in the direction of pull. So obviously if I fall, I'm going to fall downward and be loading this way. And it seems to be in a great position. If this was to walk a little in case this does come up because my rope has some drag on it, it's actually still not a bad placement because it gets tighter in here. And even if I really move it around, this thing will hold me. Now these things are only rated for, this one's rated for 12 kilonewtons. I don't know. What, what asshole put this in here like this? <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, this one's rated for 12 kilonewtons as well. Yeah, this tiny blue one is rated for eight kilonewtons. So once you do get down to a certain size, you only get eight versus 12. And if you use little stoppers, nuts, wires, or whatever the hell you wanna call these things, it's also about eight kilonewtons for the small ones. And this big one is 10. Oh wow, this one's uh, 14 kilonewtons. So we're gonna uh, actually brake test cams in our cam crusher adapter for slack snap. That may or may not be at the very end of this episode. So uh, stay tuned. Now this is a realistic situation in here. It's not ideal and nothing's really parallel. And this stuff in here is, oh, leave no trace and uh, dirty. So you, you do want it to be a very positive thing. You actually are gonna go a little deeper in this crack, but that's possible because there's enough room for your hand. And you would go about, I don't know, you can go deeper in there, make sure it doesn't walk, feel around. You don't want it to be like that and be on something hollow and open. So 
possibly like that. Direction of load is going to be kind of outward and down. Um, but not all the lobes have to be exactly the same. They will uh, change a little bit, but it is ideal if you can get them all to be even. Now, if you notice this cam has, uh, this is wider than this. So you can actually place them this way or this way. And if we try to put this cam inside of this pod, um, it doesn't really go well. These outer lobes are just not engaged very well. And you cannot do just two lobes unless you have totem cams which is a very unique cam because this will, <laughs> oh God, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> that will fall out. So if I turn that around like this and I play with it and wiggle it in there, um, these lobes are engaged and that lobe is behind that nub and that would actually be pretty solid and hold you. Now you do risk kinking the wire and kinking stuff, but at the same time, um, it's not likely you're going to be yarding on this the whole time. However, I just placed that above my head and it's the only thing to put my hand into. So I might wait until my foot is here and my hand is above it before filling that pod with a giant cam. Just like learning highlining, practice in the park everything you can before you go out and actually highline. Same with cams. Take your rack that you just got and don't show up with a brand new shiny rope for the first time before squeezing them. I know you'll squeeze them when you first get them, but I'm talking like spend some time on the ground, spend an hour or two and just keep playing with them and play with different placements. See what it feels like to place a cam in a diagonal crack, pulling down, how far to place it. Do you want it just near the edge or do you want to go a little bit deeper? Do you want to angle it? There's all sorts of things that you can just kind of feel and like I was joking about clipping as close as you can if you're going sideways, extenders, slings, double length slings, are um, very important to add to your cams if you are gonna be zigzagging, moving around, or changing direction because you don't want them walking very much. Now you might be scared and think it's safer to take your rope and clip directly above your head or at your head, like somehow you're now top roping, even if you fail, you're gonna fall quite a ways because the stretch in the rope. If you're not okay with falling, don't lead climb. Like with any lead climbing, you're constantly doing math in your head on the distance between your belayer, this piece, and you. Is if there's 30 feet between your belayer and this piece, and you're 10 feet above it, you're gonna fall 10 plus 10 plus rope stretch. You might hit the ground. Now there's actually, a, you fall a lot further than you think. You're constantly doing math while you do this. You don't want to place gear after climbing two moves and placing a cam unless you're about to do some cruxy thing. And you, you just have to evaluate whether or not it's worth placing certain things. This is a chess game while you're running out of strength. Now, back up to this pod here, if we wanted to go with a cam smaller, if you uh, do something like this, it's going to be a lot more open and you have to take into consideration whether or not it can walk. So after I push it up and feel out the maximum distance it's going to open up, it's actually pretty sketchy if you want to um, consider that they should be closed more than that. However, it's on solid rock. It's not going to come out. The black diamond cams can actually take the forest with the double pins and uh, it's not going to walk further. The biggest risk is if it widens up behind it and it moves just a little up and down, then it'll just open up and fall out. And then you're camless. Ah, nuts. Or wires or stoppers. But let's talk about passive protection. You're called all sorts of things. Basically, you have to find a constriction in the rock and it has to be a little bit uh, bigger of a crack than the nut at the beginning. And that didn't fit. Okay, so this can basically be placed in any constriction. Um, right here is a nice one because then it gets skinnier down here, but it went in nicely here. That's not going to come out of this crack. Uh, the way these are curved, they can be turned the other way and maybe sit even more. It's nice to get contacts on as many points as possible in here. Um, and you stick it in pretty deep there and you're going to be pulling down. That does actually move quite a bit. So what I could do is go up a little higher right here, place that in there. And that's uh, just enough to get stuck. So this wire can move back and forth and the nut does not. 
but your partner can just push the nut up and remove it. That's actually a really nice nut placement. The problem with really tight constrictions is it gets stuck. So in this case, you just don't want to force it. You want to keep it moving so you can find that perfect spot in order to get it out. Now, if you have nice, solid granite rock, you can actually keep it near the, the edge here. But I've been finding in this particular crack that if I put it in a little bit deeper, that it actually doesn't get stuck as bad. Well, that's just not going to come out if I pull down on it. But it is definitely a pain in the ass to remove. These can also be turned sideways. You can just place them in like this and they work just the same. So the moral of the story is practice on the ground when you're not in danger, while you're calm and get very comfortable pulling them off your harness, squeezing them and identifying the size. If you can't nail it on the first try on what size correct that is, and you can measure, like you can figure out your hand size and be like, oh, if that's a full width of my full fingers, that would be like a 0.5 or a 0.75, depending on your hand. So if you want to practice weighting them to see if they actually hold, uh, you can put them in and you can add a sling. You don't want one this short. You would want one that's very close to the ground. So your foot's like really close and put a boulder pad behind you because stuff might come out and then get on and you can like bounce test it. Make sure it doesn't hit you in the face. It's very similar to aid climbing, except you don't go up. You stay on the ground and you stay safe while doing it. I really encourage you to practice. So we are going to break in our slack snap machine, cams, nuts, and a bunch of other stuff because now we have the cam crusher adapter. And we're gonna show you one cam at the end of this episode just to wet your whistle on what that's gonna be like. Because we are gonna test normal uh, in a straight pull, but we're also gonna test things like putting it in the crack and yarding on it and going around a corner. We're gonna do all sorts of things because we have hydraulics and we love it. So um, tell us if you have old cams that you're willing to donate in order for us to have cams to break until Black Diamond wants to finally pick up the tab. Hint, hint. Or leave in the comments below what kind of tests you wanna see because we do read them all and it does steer how we do our tests and what we do test. So make sure you give us feedback all the time. Let's go see one of our cams bust. Would it get pulled to? Wow, 10.26 or 10, yep, 10 kilonewtons, okay. Or 2,150 pounds of force. So this was kind of stuck there. Okay. Um, it maybe got pulled out of alignment and is stuck yeah. on the other axle, um, but it's loose now. Um, but other than that, like the cam, Okay. Cool. Oh, there's uh there's damage there. Oh, sick. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, let's uh check the slow mo. Let's stick it back in and do it again, and we'll make it um more tapered like this so it can't slip. That's cool. Okay. 13.73. All right. All right. We're getting some good numbers here. 3,000 pounds of force. What do you think? Um, look at how bent that kink that loop is now. Your cam is really kinky. All right. Let's uh, connect direct. How many brake tests can we do to one cam? Okay, we are in again for our third attempt, but we are connected direct. Go for it, Bobby. Squawk. 
squatting on the floor while this is going on <laughs> with a selfie stick. Things can't fly up and then down and poke my eyes out. All right, wow. The wire broke before the stem or the lobes or anything else. That, that number is lower <laughs> than the last number. <laughs> that is lower than the sling breaking string. Same number there and about close to 3,000 pounds. See if we can get this cam out. Who put it in there so deep? Oh my gosh. Oh there you go. Can't you wish you? Oh, look at oh. that. What? Whoa. Okay, so it bent the. Yeah, but both axles. Bent both axles. Yeah, you can see where the, the aluminum has deformed. Wow, that's, that's a pretty sharp edge.